are starting between uh, you guys in lunch. Let's do it very quickly. Cyber security is a 200 billion dollar market. Can you guess how much is the stock market? Five to six percent. We're talking about somewhere of uh, between 10 to 12 billion dollar market for cyber uh, security of this center. That's the total addressable market we're talking about. Yeah. What are the top challenges that we see primarily uh, in this year, post COVID, right? Number one challenge for a SOC is alert fatigue. The security analyst, L1, L2, sitting in a SOC operation center looking at various security incidents. It's a very challenging job, right? Because it's very human led. And there are chances that in a day, hundreds and thousands of alerts coming to an L1 or L2, there's a high chance that maybe a critical alert can be overlooked. And all it needs is one alert or, or an incident collapsing the entire network. And that's where the keyword of an automation platform comes in. Can an automation platform replace the human intervention? Some of the other challenges that we have in the industry is, uh, you know, uh, still gap. More than four, uh, four billion jobs are still waiting in the cybersecurity space, which needs to be filled globally. Right? Uh, post COVID, we've seen uh, a trend of cloud adoption uh, happening, and that's why the sense of cloud security has come in, right? Uh, uh, because the obvious reason that nobody has to go to a data center and go to the application, it can be done remotely or through a cloud infrastructure. It is uh, during COVID time, nobody could, and specifically during lockdown, nobody could travel even to the data center. And most of the folks were probably working from home or from uh, some of the other coffee shop. It was a very vulnerable network. And that forced uh, most of the customers uh, to adopt cloud, right? So we see that clearly a trend uh, spike in the cloud adoption post COVID, right? And, and, and of course, uh, due to, due to cloud, uh, due to uh, the, the average ticket size increasing, uh, there is definitely a need to solve this alert fatigue issue. Specifically in the, in the region, uh, Various continents has various uh, issues, but specifically the uh, data region we see uh, apart from the alert fatigue, uh, cloud visibility is another issue, right? Um, what happens is uh, when various suppliers and vendors uh, try to access your uh, workloads, which might be on prem, and there might be certain applications which might be in the cloud. And when you have a cloud adoption journey, there is a possibility that some of the cloud workloads, uh, traditional data sources, could be missed, right? And that's where the visibility comes into picture. Where you might not have a complete visibility of which applications are on prem and which are on cloud. So that that leads us to this question: that what are we trying to protect? Is it security in the cloud? Of security of the cloud, right? Uh -huh. uh, that's it. We have a complete uh, of offers a hundred solution of the security operation center, which is the SOC, and various critical apps on which it sits on top of it. So if you see bottom up, uh, from various data sources, we endpoint infrastructure network or application layer, or even the IoT sources. All these data can be put into a common data platform, right? It's a common data platform that we talk about. And then, if you see on the uh, on the left side, enterprise security, that's the same platform that we, we analyze all the logs, correlate it, and then make sense out of the data, right? Uh, because initially, if you see uh, the history of CERN, which was two, primarily two decade old story, two thousand one, two thousand two. Is what I call it's the first generation of SIP, which was primarily only for log analysis. And after that, certain compliances came into picture. Next generation was primarily about 
you know, can you monitor uh, security norms because of compliance regulations, right? And that's where things changed. And it's a SIM platform because before that there was NDR, they don't use to detect the network logs and all. And then, frankly, because of compliance, the security log started, uh, was getting SS. And uh, SIM truly came into picture. But there were certain interesting use cases that came, uh, which was primarily uh, trying to solve uh, uh, cases of uh, insider threats. Right, or lateral movement. What if your administrator is trying to access an application uh, at midnight, even if he or she is supposed to access or authorize to use that application? But what if the administrator or super user trying to do at midnight is something that you can keep probing? Some of the ways of tackling that is having a Yuba user analysis. Uh, solution, or you can have certain mechanisms of providing more intelligence on top of it, and the solution like risk based analytics uh, that can solve the problem. So, the traditional SOC was very, very uh, correlation based, and the next gen SOC is currently AI and ML uh, based, where you put in more intelligence on top of the correlation so that you can make more meaningful. Uh, analysis of the data, right? And if you see on, on, on the right, uh, there are uh, automation platform that sits on top of the same platform, which tries to automate the workflow, uh, right? Or the playbooks, which can save a lot of time for the analysts to try to manually look at all the uh, uh, incidents and try to prioritize uh, the incident and create a ticket and try to resolve. All these manual processes can be automated using the source platform. And then there are tip platforms, which, which, is, which is threat intelligence platform, uh, which, um, which even further analyzes the, uh, across the dark web or many other uh, sources of the data net. They takes the intelligent source and uh, feeds it into the SIM platform so that better analysis can be done on top of SIM. All this can be unified in a bundle uh, uh, a platform and it can be provided as, as, as a value. This is how we primarily the architecture looks like. You, you can put it in you know, any of the cloud platform uh, if you go bottom up. Uh, the Scrum Enterprise Cloud is, is primarily a uh, SIM platform followed by uh, the premium apps like Luba and so sit on top of it. And you can, uh, you can, you can um, solve various use cases that you can see on top, like insider threat for detection, compliance, and privacy regulation uh, that we all talked about. All the previous speakers talked about various use cases. Incident response and the soft automation is by me touching upon the sole uh, platform. Uh, and, and one of the data uh, from some of the most of the analyst report says less than 10% of the SOC that is implemented globally have incident response. Right? So that is some, some data that is speaking uh, volume, right? Uh, and also like and, and there's another data that says 90% of the customers who have implemented SIM have been breached. Right? So then data 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 is already speaking of how even if there is an investment in the SIM, probably the implementation is not clearly being uh, done because it's all about fine-tuning the rules of uh, the correlation engine, right? Uh, how do you solve this problem, right? Of the One of the ways is, you know, imagine you have a ten incident for a particular user. Uh, he's trying to access a mobile application and then goes and accesses the payroll application and goes to the network, calls the network, and uh, uh, you know does his daily work. So in in, in a day, probably for a user, you might get ten alerts, and which can be converted into an incident. Very happy for a level or a level person who handles so much alert, right? This based alerting can reduce that by plugging all these 10 uh, 
alert feed to a single alert. But what it does is basically takes a user profile or a device profile or a system profile and creates that these 10 alerts are primarily correlated uh, into a single user. That's actually providing more intelligence to the alert that was generated, right? So risk is alerting RPA can solve a significant amount of uh, 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 problems that we saw uh, this way. And one of the ways of doing this is fine tuning the uh, rules, fine tuning the engine using uh, algorithm uh, AI engine models. What is finally uh, for modernization? Like I said, right, uh, we have to move beyond correlation. And it, it's at a stage where you start predicting proactively the alerts that, you know, if there is a uh, big e commerce sales that is going to happen, there is a high possibility that there could be a DDoS attack, right? Just for example. So, if you see, it's, it's about mean time to detect and mean time to respond. It's all about reducing that uh, mean time to detect, right? Now, but a very, very critical aspect that sits on uh, in between detection and response is the investigation part, right? How do you really investigate uh, an incident where it happens and how, uh, how much time you take to investigate and resolve it is the key, right? Uh, and then ideally, it should be near zero. It should be real time. That's where the entire uh, algorithm is, is written and trying to solve it, right? And finally, uh, this is how the entire piece comes into the picture if you try to connect the dots. On the left side, we have all the different uh, data sources that needs uh, to be uh, captured in a on data platform because it's all about visibility. If you don't have endpoint, network uh, logs, application logs uh, in one uh, uh, platform, you might miss, uh, miss some of the visibility uh, or a lot of potential data sources. So you bring everything under one data platform. And then uh, you add rules on top of it. Correlation can happen. I mean, you can always forward all these logs uh, to forward a uh, index uh, these uh, uh, data sources so that you can retrieve it uh, uh, very quickly when when uh, when any alert happens. And also, um, security operation automation platform is all about responding. To an event, right? And how quickly can you respond uh, to an event is a key, right? And everything can be automated by writing your labels, pre built labels, which, which can be leveraged, and then pushing those changes to the endpoint uh, or data sources to go and fix it, right? Uh, of course, that, that has challenges because the uh, organization has, has a change management process, but this can. Uh, we merge very, very seamlessly to all the uh, change management processes in the organization. This is primarily how uh, seamless automation can bring value to the security operation center. Outcome is any, any investment in terms of ROI that, that a CISO organization takes uh, has to be measured in terms of what's the outcome, right? Uh, is my alert, uh, which was 20 alerts per month last quarter, reducing to 3 alerts per month from this quarter, is, is one of the KPI uh, to measure success, right? This is how a, a, any modernization form has to be uh, uh, measured and tracked. That uh, is the security event actually coming up. Uh, and, and I'll show you uh, some of the outcomes uh, to some of the case studies that we have achieved. That the number of alerts after we uh, uh, have implemented this case analysis has really come down. All right? Uh, just want to put one slide to show how uh, the life of the analysis is, and uh, the L1 or L2 analysis, security analysis is, before implementing a source platform and after, right? Imagine a uh, uh, security analyst spending say 30 minutes per incident, right? Uh, and 
PA security app analyze uh, and create the next level uh, uh, SOPs and analyze which generate a ticket and help it resolve it. Right? That's how a journey analysis is done manually without the whole platform. Once the whole uh, automation platform sits on top of it, you have created workflows, playbooks that can be generated. Uh, which will mostly uh, automate most of the uh, analyst job and reduce it by one tenth, right? Uh, and, and and some of the numbers that uh, uh, that we've seen some of from some of the customers which I've shared uh, is uh, showing a success rate. Um, most of the organizations who have implemented uh, the operation platform on top of soft have got the outcome in terms of reducing the number of words and, and saving time. Well, the case study, uh, these are some of my last two slides. Uh, some of the case study which has reduced the time to uh, 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 generate an alert by uh, this one. You can see some of the uh, 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 reduced to take 10 minutes and now in a few seconds, some of the alerts are uh, being generated, uh, captured and resolved. These are uh, some of the customers in Europe uh, tell me uh, the telco space which has uh, shown up the outcome. Right? The last slide. How, how, what's the real vision of all the cybersecurity uh, folks, right? I, I can tell you uh, for sure. I mean, uh, we have uh, many vendors in the soft sim space. Before I spoke, a lot of my uh, computers were speaking. Uh, a lot of customers were speaking, and all are invited by saying, <laughs> "Surely these four uh, uh, things, right? Um, if you don't automate, yeah. there is a significant chance. There is a significant chance that uh, some of the critical alerts could be missed. You primarily want your security analysts to focus not on the security on those." Valuing alerts. Right? The point is, most of the organization is trying to outsource cybersecurity right? to any of the mitigators or other players. Uh, but the risk always is within the organization. You can't outsource the risk. Right? Uh, and that's where uh, uh, the investment in all of these platforms can be done. Uh, data from anywhere uh, uh, should, should come to uh, uh, all the various data sources should be integrated and brought to a home platform and then to be analyzed and, and the models can sit on top of it which, which can analyze and reduce noise dependency on uh, user intervention. We have taken the hackers hack people, not technology, right? You can pick the best of the technology, but at the end of the day, it's people's game. Right? Uh, it might be the biggest game, right? But there's always an aspect of good people and bad people in the organization which uh, you need to identify like, who are good and who are bad by the way. Uh, always leverage to any platform that you want to access. There are tons of SIM platforms, tons of SOAR and UBAN platforms. Whichever you analyze, right? All the key aspects should be how well uh, we are able to rest, how well the workflow or the automation platform uh, can re help reduce your analysis time, right? That's one of the key aspects uh, that you, you should be anal uh, analyzing. And uh, of course, uh, there is more emphasis on after COVID, uh, more emphisis on the retail platform as well because they create enormous value. Uh, by bringing in the third party uh, themes, uh, which actually crawls the dark web or outside your comfort zone and brings some value and showcases, uh, which, which, uh, which as if are out there, which means are already compromised or might be compromised, right? Those intel can only be provided by a threat intel platform, which can be seamlessly integrated to your same platform. Right? Thank you very much. Uh, that was my last slide. Uh, thank you, everyone. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Derek. Let's give Mr. Derek a big round.